What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day and today we're taking a look at Gigantic, a brand new MOBA to enter the sphere. Now it may not be new for me, I've actually tracked the game for a while and been really excited to play it. Uh, some of you may not have any idea about it or have heard rumblings in the bushes and now it's coming to light finally, uh, at least for my viewers and subscribers on this channel. Now I think Gigantic has a great opportunity to make a stake in the mobile world and what is it? It's a MOBA. It's a third person shooter, an unforgettable experience of hardcore 5 on 5 PvP action for skilled gamers. I love that tagline and it really does isolate what this is about. It's about a skilled MOBA game. It's hardcore PvP action. It really is. It's a PvP game. It's a it's a skilled gamer games. If you are skilled, there's a lot of tricky skill shots and a lot of decision making that has to be taken. A lot of things to keep in your mind because you're building structures. You're also building um you're building people, really. Like whether they there there are different animals and creatures that you build that help you to win a match, and there's a very different pacing in this game that's unique to other MOBAs. I play a lot of Smite. I've played Heroes of the Storm. I've dabbled in League of Legends, and that's a very that's a dabble. That's like a pinch. That's very little. Uh, and Gigantic has been one of the easier ones for me to get in and enjoy as a single player by myself, and I'm sure as a group of friends, which I'll be doing very soon. I've got a gameplay coming up for you on Lord Gnosis where I'll walk you through what Gigantic is and what a match of Gigantic looks like and also try to help you uh, move from not knowing anything, which is what will happen, to understanding how the game functions. Because again, there's a very different gameplay uh, pacing that goes on because you're building creatures and you're attacking uh, the enemy's base at certain times and there's kind of skirmishing going on in between. So hopefully this video will help to let you know exactly what you can expect from a gigantic game, give you a cool preview of a champion, Lord Nosos, and I believe they're called heroes in this game, and also let you know if you want to buy it, if you want to try it, and if you're interested in keeping tabs on it. Also, if you want to see me cover gigantic again, which I probably already want to myself, but if you really want to see that and more gameplay, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know that you're really excited for it. Hit the notification bell if you are subscribed to be able to check out the content that I put out right away. All right, that's it for me right now. Let's head into the gameplay and start taking a look at Motiga's new MOBA, Gigantic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the game. Sanctum Falls will be the map we play on. I am playing as Lord Gnosis. And actually, I just want to point out, you could change your hero at this point point in the character selection screen. One of the interesting things Gigantic allows you to do is to pick several heroes that you want to have in your, your potential hero selection. So that when you actually get matched, uh, if you've played like Heroes of the Storm or something, you kind of select your character you want to play and then you get matched with other other characters uh, but then when you actually see who everyone's picked you could change your heroes you see here people are changing their heroes behind me and then readying uh, because they've brought in maybe three options so hey I I've got my range I've got my melee I've got my support if we don't have enough supports I'll change it to my support even though I'd rather play my melee and that's exactly what happened I went with Lord Nosos because I'm like I'm doing a video I need to play with the guy that I know already uh, and so this is who I'll be playing with Lord Nosos very cool champion he's an offensive powerhouse and uh, they've got a little bit of lore around him. Actually, if you go to the website, I would suggest doing that. Gigantic. Go gigantic.com slash en slash heroes. And you'll be able to see all of those heroes there and actually see kind of their play style, how to play them, whether they really uh, veer towards one thing, whether it's attack, defense, mobility, or utility. Uh, in my case with Lord Nosos, he is going to be attack oriented. So he's all about getting into the fight, stunning his opponents, doing more damage by hitting them in a row, uh, immobilizing my enemies, and uh, obviously just being faster and tougher and uh, helping my allies to do that as well. I, I do not know if I am uh, using everything correctly. And so that is something that I think should be very, very obvious to all of you that I'm I'm learning this game as well. And that's part of what I want to talk about through this gameplay, just showing you, you know, kind of what I learned through playing it and also uh, what I did right, what was inherent and what I think, you know, you'll get as well, but also what you may need some help with. And here's the beautiful starting cutscene here. I love it. Let's just listen to this for a second. Okay, there's nothing to listen to. I thought they were going to go into something else, but look at this jump. We're heading off into battle. And this is where I think you already get a little confused. Now, I know that you can go in and upgrade this. Uh, you actually have to press 1, 2, or 3. 
and choose which one you want. And you're building a guy. So if you haven't figured it out, Gigantic is a game that has several components. One is fighting, uh, but one is building and customizing uh, not only your champion, but the battleground. You're building allies at these little points on the map. You can see they're labeled A, B, C, E, and D, I believe, are neutral, and H and F are towards the enemy's side. And you're basically building allies that can help uh, your own allies who are playing as people uh, to do better and to have more advantages. You see, our team here is pretty noob-oriented. We don't go and build all our stuff right now. We're actually just trying to fight. I see already two of my members over there trying to fight, so I decide I need to go help them. But we're just taking so much damage already because we just are straight into their base. They have all the advantages. Now, we are getting hit by their monster. And uh, now it's just time to go into it. This is a young Cerberus. This is actually uh, just a straight up thing that is going to rock the house if you keep fighting it. So I decided to try and move away. This guy's pretty dangerous though. And he's low health. Let's see if we can finish him off. We do get the kill. Jumping higher as well. And now it looks like there's 2v3. We have the upper hand advantage. It's my counterpart there. Gordon Osos on the enemy team. He's going to sprint away. I want to try and follow him, but I don't have a lot of sprint left. So we decide to take on the Cerberus. But a nice interrupt by Nosos, who can actually interrupt his opponents. That's the champion I'm using. Uh, he can actually interrupt his opponents and uh, stop what they're doing. So I was trying to go for an interrupt, and look at this. Just too much damage. Uh, Beckett, I believe, comes back. The ranged champion who's got grenades and rocket launchers. This one right here, and comes back to finish me. And, of course, that's because we're in their base. So they get all these points up top. And this is a good segue to talk about that. All these points on the top, all those player kills result in points, kind of energy gain for one or the other teams. If we would have got a bunch of kills, we would have been at 80, they would have been at 30. But now they've got a bunch of kills on us, they've done a lot of good things. And so they're very close to getting to 100. When you get to 100, your guardian goes and attacks the other guardian. And it leaves that guardian vulnerable for the ability to actually, uh, to actually get attacked by the enemy team. So, they've got 100, we now have to defend. Their Guardian's gonna fly over and attack our Guardian. And at this point, we need to group up and make sure that we fight in a favorable position and stop the enemy team from aggressing onto us. We need to save our Guardian's health as much as possible. No one is there yet, but see, here you go. There's their enemy Guardian who's gonna make our Guardian vulnerable, and that's what we need to defend. So you'll see the enemy team. There they are, coming up real soon. Lord knows this, we're not gonna let you go off to Beckett in the back line because she's gonna do so much damage. So I'm just in her face, use the speed boost to get in a way, and I fall down, no! But I catch the stealth champion coming in from the back as well. So this is good. The Guardian taking damage still, and it seems that we they have done their job. They've done a lot to us, but can we get a few kills off of this? If we can, we're going to get some extra power. It's here, plus 10 for us, plus 20 now. It seems like we've got two kills, and I am focused trying to use my F ability, which I think is, uh, I think that's like my ultimate, to be honest. I'm not really sure. I believe this is just a, a AOE kind of ultimate use. Every champion has one. Every hero has one. And uh, mine, I believe, uh, I think damages their armor. Uh, interrupts them, slows, it, it's a very utility oriented, kind of everyone in there just is way weaker and takes more damage and is, is not, so it's not in a position to want to fight. So he could do that and you can kind of use it really quickly, just press F, or you can hold it down and do for a bigger radius. Now here is the interesting part about this game too, you can upgrade your abilities, so you're not building items in Gigantic, you're actually upgrading your abilities to make them function in different ways, making them more powerful. And there's a lot of ways you can go. You don't upgrade every single ability to the highest rank, it seems like, in most games. At least the games I've played. I've kind of chosen one route to follow. Like, I care about my, my left mouse button, my normal basic attack. So I'll upgrade those to the best that they can be. And then maybe my charge. Uh, and then if I have left over for my E and my spear, I'll use those. Uh, but typically, I don't find myself loving... Um, uh, loving just to upgrade everything evenly. I, I kind of just choose one that I'm going for in terms of my play style. And that is uh, very interesting because it makes for you to, to make those choices and keep making those choices again. Now, see, here's a, here's a summoner that the enemy team in the neutral zone of E has tried to summon. And so I have a chance to actually destroy this. It's just me right now. And I'm making sure that this does not come into effect uh, before, uh, before the timer runs out, I think, for them to kind of get built up. So I'm denying this summoner, uh, this bloomer, which I believe would give them health. And that would mean that if they were fighting around here, or if this one actually transitioned into the battle with them, it would be healing the allies as well. I've got a homie here helping me out. Thank you, my man. Blocking sleep. Helping me out to finish this one out. So we get the extra points for that. Now we go to 100, and it is our time to attack. I built my own ally there who's going to heal up uh, our allies when he's near us, or when we're near him, him fighting in that area. And now it is time to go ahead and follow our big guardian into battle. But here's Beckett. Oh, God, get wrecked. Getting taken down by Lord Nosos big time. And now I'm sprinting over. I love this sprint. He's got his chest up. 
It's like, he's like, you know what? I'm honorable. I'm going to sprint, but I'm going to do this in an honorable way. <laughs> he just does. I'm trying to hit some long spear shots. That's his right mouse button. He can throw his spear. You can kind of charge it up if you build it up in a certain way. It's this really interesting skill shot. It's got gravity on it, so you got to, like, aim above your champion. His left mouse button is just going to do more damage the more he hits you. You can sprint as well. And look, there's the knockup. It's an interrupt, but it won't stop him from sprinting because he wasn't using an ability. I use my E, and that's like a sprint that I have on my own to make me move faster and help me to evade some more attacks. But the 1v1 battle seems to be going my way but he gets some distance on me and he might not be able to fall i have the spear available i do not hit him but my teammates finish off the deed and now their team their enemy guardian has been wounded but we have not taken too much damage off him because we got caught in this skirmish now we've gotten a lot of kills which is good um and helps our team to have map control uh further on but we just did not get a lot of access onto the guardian damage it seems like when that was available so you know picking that up and being aware of that that was the ultimate actually if you just saw that cracked armor that was the other lord gnosis doing that ultimate onto me so i have that same ultimate now it's like so many against so many i'm trying to move the cerberus every time i fight this guy he is just kicking my button i am very low in health it's that left hand bar right there and i just didn't even know i remember taking this fight and being like i had no idea where my health bar was that was another thing that to me uh, maybe could be a little better. I like it, but I think for a new player trying to figure out where's my health, where's my this, it was a little bit difficult. You see here, I can I can kind of uh, upgrade a skill specialization. This is my Q. It could cover more distance, and uh, it has something. I also go for the skill specialization for the spear, though. Really interesting. I decided to do that. Uh, the Taurus is a, basically makes your spear into like a ground targeting thing, and you can slow people within it, kind of like a, a rain of arrows. A heavy barrel means when you when you throw it and charge it up you can do more damage uh, and kind of like cause bleeding and so i went for that and uh I, I went for just a different route i don't know if i normally would have done that but i said why not uh this is the kind of ultimate i believe labyrinth and i uh, see armor ignoring damage interrupts all nearby enemies and inflicts bleeding and cracked armor so he's just basically super utility there with that ultimate it makes it easy for him to pound him with those basic attacks right now i'm spending way too much time looking at this but i just wanted to show you all the abilities and kind of the options you have there again i only upgraded a few and now i'm in battle we have to protect our big guy who's been again countered by the enemy team and this guy's trying to go figure it out but look at the bleeding already coming through that talent paying off i activate the e for the speed burst catch up to him and it is all he wrote he has nowhere to go and this little speedy dude speedy gun capy who's just running around with that cape just hyper mobile is in trouble but here's my ultimate i might be able to use it under the beckett i actually don't activate it for some reason which is so weird i think i just didn't know how to activate it well enough but i use the interrupt there on a the beckett the action as you can see is high pace it is very skill oriented a lot of skill shots you can miss very alive very active beckett looking to go down one more shot the speed boost comes through can i catch up beckett gets taken down by lord nosos and so reyna f7 kills hillary 13 12 and uh, that is the end of the deal for her. And there's the highly mobile person I was talking about. Just so hard to catch up to this dude. But here's a Nosos. And you see now I've got the trait where actually if I sprint, which is holding uh, shift and I believe W at the same time, you can crack their armor. So take more damage just by hitting them with a sprint. You don't even need to use any Q or E. You just run, sprint, and then hit them. One of the things I really liked about initiating with Lord Nosos. He was a very fun guy. And see, here's the bloomer. Mention this, this is the guy you upgrade, and if you're fighting near him, he's going to be healing you. So you don't necessarily want to always take these fights. See that long charge shot I hit to force the mobility god out of here. And uh, we finish off this boomer. We've gained some points at 70 to 20. We've killed like three in a row, and now we are almost ready to spawn our guardian to go attack again. And this is this is looking good for us. And, and we are kind of already a few minutes into this fight. There's been a lot going on thus far. But you can see it's just high, non-stop pace action. She just falls to her death. <laughs> It seems like she's like, I'm out of here. Unless she didn't die. I don't know if that just, it didn't look like a place I wanted to jump off. Uh, but I get the kill there. On to Night Flight 26. So finally take him down. Summer Bloomer. This is an upgraded version. So as you can have a, a smaller Bloomer, you can actually, if they stay alive for long enough, go and upgrade them again. If we kill this one, and it looks like we've already got enough for an attack. If we kill this one, we'll clean it up. They won't have this as an advantage. And then we can go on to the attack. We've still got 25 seconds. So we should be good here. But overall... Very fun game. Try to hit the spear. Did not work. There's the cracked armor, though. Basic, basic. Look at the extra damage I'm doing. Beckett has absolutely no chance with the two of us. And just being so visceral in your face, Lord Gnosis, I really love this champion. See, my health is very low. I'm now aware of that. 
<laughs> and uh, I like this. Raging Bull now is going to give me just more damage and more stamina. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that while I wait for my health to get up. And now we see he's vulnerable for another 15 seconds. Activate the speed boost. It's time to get over there. And it's time to start dealing with that other guardian. And so he's vulnerable. I have a charge spear that I'm trying to land onto the wound. I do hit it. Can we get it enough? I'm going straight in. I don't care about anybody else. I want to get as much damage on this Guardian as possible. Got to finish him off. I go down. But the Guardian takes a lot of damage, and now we're actually in a really good spot. So despite them having gotten more Guardians than us, and, like, actually gotten more points throughout a match, and then summon their Guardian, uh, I think actually it's even now. We have way much, we have way more damage. If you look at the Guardian health bars up the top right and top left, their red one is much lower than our green one. And, uh, we have much more damage that we've done to them, because it's really all about getting the opportunity to do damage. It doesn't mean you do damage. You have to go over there as a team and time where you are on the map to be able to go and, and dominate that Guardian for that moment. And if you have the enemy team just all five standing there... It's going to be tough, as you saw. I did damage, but I died immediately, and so now they're up 30. Uh, it seems like they might have gotten a charged orb, which gives you 20 points. Uh, you see there's a really little weird... Like, you can kind of count the kills, right? So that first one that they got, if you look at the yellow bar, is kind of a skull. I believe that means that was a kill that they got on one of us. And then there's a different symbol that, that counts for two of the distance right next to it, kind of like a star. And there's another kill. You just saw it right there. So it kind of counts how you got your points in the match overall very very interesting the one thing i'd say if you're a new player uh and i want to do maybe a guide for new players a little bit in this game is kind of finding your bearings can be a little tough i mean this is literally my first game of gigantic ever like versus people it's my first game and it was a little weird sometimes i, I didn't know where i needed to be or what i needed to do and why and so hopefully this video is helping you to understand the gameplay mechanics of what I'm doing and the purpose uh, of why I'm doing that as we're getting kind of, we're getting our booties killed right now. 30 to 70 right now. They're very close to spawning another one. This is going to be, it looks like, maybe even the last one. 50 to 70, 50 to 80. If I get this, though, we get 20, so now it's 70 to 80. And you can see how strong that can be. Now we just got a kill, so it's 80 to 80. And this is huge. We just got 10, and there it is, 100. We are on the attack. They were ahead of us, 70 to 20. And we come back with a huge last minute play and we get the very final guardian it looks like there with it This could be the end. We are so close looking for the charge spear shot on the Lord knows us if we attack here and win We could do it. I've got my ultimate I finally know how to use it and if I can hit that in a big AoE It is gonna do a ton of damage and help us with this team fight So we got to be wary of that But it looks like they have three or four members ready to defend and this is not gonna be an easy one We got damage to do but they're going to stop us as best we can. We're going to go on the right-hand flank, but it looks like there's no space to actually get up there. So we're going to go back around. Wounded. The enemy guardian is there. This is the time to strike. I'm level 9, but I'm not going to upgrade anything right now because it's all about the kill. Can I get a charge spear? Nice bleeding there. I have my ultimate available. Charging it up to use it. I'm trying to dodge as many of the attacks as I can. There it is. The kill goes on to Mole Man. Already takes down one with the ultimate, and now Beckett's trying to run away. We've got more damage per shot. Hit the spear, and it actually looks like a basic attack is needed. I'm running low on health. i got to get around. I get pursued by the Lord Nosa. But there's the Beckett a charge with a basic attack means that I take him down. Winged Chip helps me to take down Hillary 12. And now the Lord Nosos is gone. And the enemy is almost wounded. There's the spy. She goes down 40 to 20. It's time to clash. Both of them are actually clashing. And I think this means in the middle of the battleground. We have tied. It is the game. The game is basically over. It seems like it is 60 to 40 right now. And the only thing available on the upper hand is Clash. I, I would be lying if I told you I exactly know why or what is happening at this point in time. But I know that things are about to end. Okay. So I know that it's very important what happens next. That Lord Nosos, I could chase him down. I see him. He's running away and trying to get caught. There's the bleeding. That's a huge advantage for me. Already got some damage on him. 50 ticking away for the next few seconds. Pop my E to catch up. But I hit a little bit of a wall. I use my sprint and he jumps in. He can't get up there. There's the cracked armor. There's the extra basic attack. The dodge misses. Actually, the interrupt misses, but it doesn't matter. There's the spear. He nice dodge jump to get out of it, but that's the kill, and now we get the rampage. Our guardian is rampaging. We need to prepare to attack. It's the clash, and it is time for us to take the win. I will not suffer a video like this without winning on my first game ever. And I still haven't upgraded. This is the thing you want to do. Make sure you're aware of those upgrades. I could have been gaining more focus or burst damage, uh, but I have not hit left control in a while because I've just known that it's important to do things. But here it is. They're rampaging. We get the damage off, and it's all up to my team. I'm just trying to stop them all. Beckett cannot hit my teammates because that will mean no damage onto the enemy guardian. Trying to force out the huge AoE range damage dealer right now, and we do get the kill. Trifecta for me. Hillary 12 goes down. 
down. Lord Gnosis is my next target. There's the E, the interrupt, so he cannot do any damage, and that's the kill. That's the game. House Orion with the victory. Taking it down, and look at this match complete. We get a little bit of, uh, what is, what is that called? Crowns. We get some crowns which is the in-game currency, and we get rubies as well, which is kind of the paid in-game currency. So this is a free-to-play game, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, and it is actually going to be very much similar to Smite games that you and high-res games that you see uh, that I cover a lot, where you can have gold that you earn, that's standard currency that you could still unlock champions and heroes with. Uh, you see here, I got the most efficiency, nine efficiency, most kills in the game. Pretty dang solid stuff there. So, very solid game. But again, you could buy skins and, and, and uh, cool things with rubies only, which is the paid currency. Uh, and some things will be locked behind that from what they've said. And then, of course, gold will be that kind of currency that can get you a lot of interesting, cool things. Maybe some lower level skins. Obviously, access to the new heroes so you can continue uh, your gameplay experience. Uh, but overall, I really like this game. Like, I really had fun in this match, and it was very different. And that's what I appreciate about this game. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully you all appreciate that, too. If you're coming from a Smite, a Heroes of the Storm, uh, League of Legends kind of background where you like MOBAs, this is definitely going to be a twist for you. It's going to be different. Uh, I know a lot of people have covered it and said, I think it's great here. It's still in beta. It's still in uh, the preview stage. It's an open beta right now. But this will be on Xbox One. It will be on uh, the Windows 10 store, and it will be on Arc as well so you'll be able to play this uh with buddies from windows 10 and xbox at the same time and arc will be its own kind of system as well hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at gigantic if you did and you want to see more please leave a like and comment what you'd like to see more of whether it's a champion a character or a game mode and as, as always leave a subscribe to stay tuned to more content and hit that notification bell to know when i upload my next video as always guys remember to never give up never stop gaming and i'll see you all next time